Big Country Politics on KTAB continues. And thanks for staying with us. You just heard from Senator John Cornyn. Now you'll get to hear from his Democratic, Democratic challenger, MJ M- M- Hager. He, uh, here once again is Travis Ruiz. And joining us now is Senate candidate MJ Hager. MJ, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Why don't we start off with uh, you telling us a little bit about yourself and and what you're hoping to accomplish um, should you become our next senator here in Texas? Yeah, thanks. Um, So I was raised in very rural Texas. Um, I joined the military, uh, did 12 years, uh, three tours in Afghanistan as a rescue helicopter pilot, Um, got out, did... uh, five years in healthcare. That sounds like a prison term. I didn't do five years in like healthcare prison. I served the community working in in the healthcare industry for five years, but in Texas, you know, that's, that can be traumatic as well. Um, Texas, obviously we have a lot of challenges when it comes to healthcare, whether it's the, the, the high number or the record number of people without insurance or the, the challenges in getting um, access to care out in rural areas. Um, and then, you know, I took on the bureaucracy in DC to try to open up jobs for women in the military. And I was successful at building a broad bipartisan coalition, um, despite being told I would not be successful because I wasn't a big donor and I didn't have a lot of political capital. And I kind of looked around wondering why more people couldn't do this, couldn't build a broad bipartisan coalition to actually do something to make our country stronger. So I figured I'd better come back with more authority. Um, you know, so I'm running for this office. I'm running for this office in particular because um, I, the best way I can describe it is I, I used to put out wildfires as part of my, uh, as, as a helicopter pilot, I would go and grab a bu- bucket of water and dump it on a, a fire. And, uh, the, you know, I've just been trained to grab the biggest bucket of water I could find and go dump it on the worst fire. And certainly the, the biggest dumpster fire, I think, is in the Senate um, where the legislative graveyard is, where good legislation goes to die, where um, so many um, ultra like hyper partisan judges that are wildly unqualified largely and not all of them but a lot of them um are getting confirmed by the senate so um you know i took an oath to support and defend the constitution against all enemies foreign and domestic and running for this office is a fulfillment of that oath and it's the best way i can protect my my two kiddos i've got a three and a five-year-old um and and we just need to do better for our kids well thank you so much for your service first of all oh thanks yeah, sure. It was, it was my honor to serve. Well, and, you know, talking about the Air Force, the Air Force plays a huge role in the economy and the lives of many of us here in Abilene and across the big country. And, you know, Dias is about to go through a change here in the next decade yes. um, with the B-21 coming on board. And um, how, how will you help support that? And, and what's your message to uh, the airmen and, and their families um, here in Abilene? Yeah, I know how critical military technology is to us being able to accomplish our mission around the world. Um, I actually, a lot of people know that I was a helicopter pilot. Most people don't know that the first five years of my 12 years in the military, I was over 85% of the B-2 stealth bomber. I was actually an aircraft maintenance officer first. Um, And so I... I feel like we need more people like me sitting on the Senate Armed Services Committee and and places like that where we know what questions to ask to make sure that um, programs are going along smoothly and money is being spent, um, you know, in the best way. Um, And I'm excited to be able to provide a a credible and a knowledgeable voice on those types of committees to to fight to keep that type of, um, you know, whether it's aircraft production or, or, you know, just uh, the, the bases around Texas that are doing such great work for our national security to keep them healthy. All right. Um, so this is kind of the final leg of the election. So it, it, it's already been a, kind of a, a long, fierce battle with the runoff. Um, how are you feeling? You know, we're uh, 90 days away from that November yeah. day. I'm feeling really good. Um, you know, the, probably one of the biggest hurdles in winning this election is getting people to actually believe that it's possible. And now, you know, having a close race last cycle helped. Um, but a lot of people think of Ted Cruz as being more vulnerable than John Cornyn um, because Cornyn kind of doesn't rock the boat. But actually, the fact that Ted Cruz rocks the boat is what so many independent voters love about him. He had a 52% approval rating going into the election. John Cornyn's got like a, a 28 to a 32, depending on the poll that you're looking at. We are actually one point behind him in polling. 
Um, and there's a, still a big chunk of undecided voters. And that's just how I like it, frankly, because um, I know that once people hear my message and they know that I'm one of them, um, that, you know, I have faced the challenges that they have faced, that we need fewer career politicians and their little privileged little bubbles um, making decisions for us. And we need more people like me that have, have worked minimum wage jobs and have, you know, um, been laid off, worried about where I'm going to get my health care from. So, for example, my, my favorite example of this is uh, John Cornyn is currently receiving three taxpayer funded pensions in addition to his government paycheck. So he is not concerned about whether or not Social Security is going to be there for him because he has his fourth pension coming to him when I you know, get him fired from his job in November. Um, and so, you know, that's why they can't seem to fix things that are concerning us. I mean, you never hear about social security in the headlines, right? But when I'm out talking to regular working Texans, they're talking to me about, especially in rural areas, um, they're talking to me about the quality of education. They're talking to me about the, their, uh, the lack of their ability to get health care, whether it's financial or physical access in you know, those rural areas. But they're also talking to me about Social Security. So you know, people, they're not asking for a lot and they're not asking for a handout. They're asking for uh, our government to keep their word and keep their promises to them um, for the things that they've paid into. I think our government should keep our word to our seniors and our veterans and uh, our allies and, and our enemies. Um, and we need to get back to a place where we... Um, are known for our integrity and keeping our word. And we're just not there right now. Right now is um, crazy times with the pandemic yeah. going on. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about the Republicans and specifically Senator Cornyn's response and maybe what you would have done differently. Yeah, I said it was a mistake um, to uh, do the expanded unemployment um, and that people aren't going back to work. And to think that people aren't going back to work because they're living high on the hog on, on their very meager unemployment is, 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 is why I think we need more regular people in office. Because you and I know how little people are getting on unemployment insurance and that it's not enough to live comfortably. It might be a, a bridge to help you keep food on the table, but it's definitely not an incentive to not go back to work. People are not going back to work because it's not safe. And he needs to do more and he needs to um, pressure Governor Abbott to do more to get us more access to testing, to get us more contact tracing, to, to, to listen to frontline and essential workers in healthcare and in meatpacking and other areas, um, you know, to, to get them the PPE that they need. Senator Cornyn seems more interested in making sure that corporations are protected from liability who fail their workers um, and, and don't give them, you know, the type of safety measures and PPE that would keep them safe. Um, that's not what we should be focusing on. We should be focusing on the, getting the public health aspect of this under control, um, fixing our healthcare system that right now is employer provided model, which I think that we need a public option. Um, I think we need to protect people's choices on, on how they get their health care insurance. And if they, you know, want to stay on their employer provided model, great. Um, but now we have nearly one out of every three Texans that are between the ages of 18 and 65. One out of three don't have access to health care because it's an employer provided model. So we need a public option where people can, um, you know, buy into Medicare. I was on TRICARE. For those of you listening that were in the military, if you were on TRICARE, you've been on Medicare. It's basically military Medicare. And TRICARE was the best uh, care that I ever got. Right. Um, and so I would like to see Senator Cornyn do something about how many people don't have access to health care, do something about the spread of this pandemic and economically understand that it's not about the stock market. It's about gross domestic product and it's about the buying power and the economic power of the working families and the middle class. Um, you know, that that's why our economy is crashing is because nobody's looking out for them and everyone's, you know, looking out for the, the top 0.1%. MJ, you talked about your military service and um, you, you being an everyday Texan. Um, a quick Google search of you and your tattoos come up um, <laughs> and how it's, uh, you know, helping lead a, a new era of women veterans. Talk to me a little bit about yeah. that and how that's kind of come to light. Yeah, you know, I get a lot of crap for that, I got to tell you. Um, but uh, what, what, what most people don't know is that I actually, um, I was shot down in my third tour in Afghanistan, and I was also shot, uh, the, took a bullet through the, the windshield that fragmented into several pieces, um, in my, and it hit my arm and leg. And so I was just really tired of um, seeing the scar tissue every time I would reach down to pick up my kiddos. Um, so this is the, this is the um, 
tattoo uh, and I have like a cherry blossoms over all of the little um, sort of shrapnel scar pieces. Um, and I think that that's just kind of part of my personality is, is something that I do is I take, um, I take ugly things and, and try to make them beautiful. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think that I'm, ta I'm trying to take this ugly situation of a, of a, a government that's set up to work for the rich corporate special interests and, and trying to mold it into the, the, the state and the country that I grew up believing that we lived in. Um, this, this country that was uh, opportunity and, and the American dream where you could, you could come here with your family and, and if you sacrificed and you made good choices and you worked hard, you could make something of yourself and you could begin a, generation, a generational wealth for your family. That is not the reality for so many people, whether it's because of race or zip code. Um, and so I would just like to see us live up to that ideal. I think that that's the most patriotic thing I can do with the last couple decades of my career is try to, um, you know, try to ensure that the country that we're handing our kids is the country that you and I grew up with. Um, and, and, you know, the reality of, of opportunity and entrepreneurship and, and supporting small businesses is actually the reality for other people, regardless of skin color and zip code. Um, it just hasn't been that reality for so long. And I think that that's, it's sad um, because I think that the idea of America and what we stand for is beautiful. And, and I want that reality for people. MJ, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully I'll talk to you again soon. And you can watch both of those interviews again on our website at BigCountryHomePage.com. We'll be right back.